Morning guys. Really must stop hanging my sticky tapes up. <laughs> That's how far it's dropped overnight. Yeah, never mind. Well, I need to go to Sainsbury's to get breakfast. Little boss man's had his breakfast. Um. I haven't got nothing here for my breakfast. I haven't got no bread or anything till I uh, pop to Sainsbury's and get it. Um, I'm going to try and sort out behind this computer desk today. I did attempt to uh, screw the black extension socket up on the wall, but uh, the problem with that is it doesn't have the brackets on the back to hang it. As you can see with this one, you've got one, two of these, so you can put a couple of screws in the wall and hang it on the wall, but uh, that black one hasn't got it. So, as the black one is a wireable one, like this one, I can take this cover off on the end and put my own length of cable on it. I'm uh, basically going to do that and swap it for this, because it, it would be a lot easier to put this on the existing cable, then that would then it would be to uh, pull that out, that out, and that out, and pull the whole cable out. <laughs> because in order to pull that out and that out, I've got to take those off because they're far too heavy, and I've got to take off all of this as well. So. Yeah, it's a lot easier just to put this on the end of the cable, which is what I'm going to do. And then it'll probably get hung somewhere up here because of the length of the cable. No, I'm not sure where yet, not until I get the cable on. Then I can um, get the cables tidied behind this. I might have pulled some fur out. I didn't know he was right behind me, on right behind the chair, so when I rolled back, I rolled over him. Oops. You poor bugger. Didn't seem alright, though. I can't see any bald patches or any bleeding, so I suppose he's fine. Apart from the loss of a little bit of hair. If that was me, it may not have been me, it may have just been malted fur. I don't know. So, that's the plan for today. Uh, I haven't spoke to Mum yet, so I don't know if we're still doing a car boot sale tomorrow. Uh, she's at Fracture Clinic at the minute, having a hand or, well, couldn't be put in a cast or couldn't be put in a, one of those removable straps. Depending what the um, staff there feel is best. I suppose she'll have to have an x-ray again so they can see what uh, what the damage is, if any. So they can decide the best course of action. Hopefully if it's just a strap that she get, you know, the, um, yeah, the removable strap. I can't remember the actual name for it now. She'd still uh, be able to drive. Weird taste in my mouth this morning. Right. Get out of that cat food tin, pain in the ass, fucking fly. Stick that in the fridge. Laying there pissing eggs in the cat food. And I end up having to chuck cat food out because I'm not going to feed my cat cat food that's got friggin' flies' eggs in it. I certainly wouldn't eat food with flies' eggs in it, so I wouldn't give it to the cat. Oh, I do hate flies. It must be one of the most annoying of insects. Ooh, right.
I hope I clear some space on this floor as well. Nemo spent the whole night on my coat down here. So I'm going to give you a bit of a sucking because I'm going to hang the coat up. Because I missed my little buddy on the bed. There we go. Where's my little hanger? There it is. I don't know if I'm going to need a coat outside. I might put my little jacket on. There we go. I can't even push the table back properly yet. Not till I've done that. This stuff seems to give me bloody killer heartburn, so... I think I'll go and get a bottle from Lidl's. It's a little more expensive, but I actually like it. That basic stuff doesn't taste too bad. I think because it's um, a bit vinegary, it's probably what's given me the heartburn. I mean, this is the stuff you get from Lidl's. This is actually quite sweet, this stuff. So if you like a sweeter ketchup, then that's a good one to go for. I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but it's nothing stupid. Not like the prices of some other brand like Heinz, anyway. A lot of people slate um, Lidl's, but uh, for a German food chain store, supermarket, whatever you want to call it, it's uh, pretty good in my opinion. And I've, I've seen people argue that they don't have top brands in there. Well, they do, but most of what they stock is actually their own brands. They do have some brand names in there. I know they've got Heinz in there. Uh, I know they stock Pepsi. And there's a few others. Those are the, about the only two I've actually noticed for brands. But I haven't really paid attention. I know they've got more in there. I can't remember what the percentage was now. I think it's something like 20 or 30 percent top brand names and the rest is their own stuff but uh, if you actually give it a try some of their um, food and whatnot is actually pretty good for the price and it's pretty cheap you know the Lidl's in my town is always busy actually half the time it seems uh, it seems uh, Lidl's is actually busier than Sainsbury's So, uh, you know, don't knock something until you've tried it. Aldi is another German uh, supermarket chain. and I've never actually been in an Aldi. I'm not keen on Tesco. I'm not keen on Morrison. So, um, don't mind going in an Asda. Never really thought much about Iceland. Uh, just trying to think of others. <laughs> Can't think of any at the minute. I don't think Summerfield still exists anymore. I'm not surprised because that really was a shit supermarket. I can remember when I was little and I used to go into Summerfields with my mum. And I could guarantee every time she'd go in there she'd find something to complain to the manager about. Usually the condition of the meat they sold, which I have to admit, it didn't look very appetizing half the time. It was a very off colour and ugh. It just wasn't the sort of quality you'd expect in a supermarket. But at Sainsbury's what our local Summerfield store and opened up and we've had a Sainsbury's ever since. They, uh, they've done a lot of work to that store actually. They built a big ass extension on it. Uh, bought the gar garage next door so they could, uh, cause, um, 
Well, actually, no, they didn't. Turn fibs there, I've just remembered. Uh, Summerfield's bought the garage. And was just running the um, petrol station bit of it. And the car wash. Uh, so I'm guessing when Sainsbury's bought Summerfield's, they bought that with it. Because uh, they completely flattened the garage and all the um, workshop buildings. Rebuilt the garage, which wasn't a bad thing really, because uh, the way the old forecourt was designed, there was cars queuing up down the road. So, with their new design, that's um, eradicated that problem. By um, adding more pumps for starters and designing it so cars can't queue out on the road. Uh, but in doing so, that made them able to extend the car park because when they extended the store they built on one built it onto one section of the car park that did exist. So and the stores had a couple of refurbishments over the years. Of course cool, I think that actually I can't remember when Sainsbury's took that over. I'm going back several years now. Many, many years. Um, I don't have too many gripes with Sainsbury's. Apart from recently when there was several whole rows of lighting that had gone down, making the store rather dark and have, well, more, more so have some dark areas and, uh, it was taking ages to get them fixed because it was like it for months there's one row down that was down for months and it's only just been fixed um, but I just sent customer service a friendly email and you know, just basically said it's getting a bit ridiculous the amount of lights that has gone down I think I counted about four complete rows had gone down if I count the two half rows that as um, one row yeah yeah there's three main rows that had gone down completely and two rows where only half of them had gone down which I think to most people would be a bit ridiculous I know you get the odd light that will blow you know a tube that will go or a starter that will go because they're fluorescent lights so you'd expect to break down that one or two lights here and there, but to have that many complete rows go down and taking so long to repair them. Actually they've been done though since I've made that email. I was actually um most of them were back online or fixed within a week of me sending the um email. I never got a reply. So I don't know if my email actually had a direct effect on them, but I just found it odd that, you know, a matter of days after I sent the email, they've had an electrician in there to get as many of the lights back on as possible. And uh, I've actually noticed recently that the sort of final couple of rows that were still playing up are actually working now. So that's good. We can actually see what we're doing. Because every time I went in there, I kept joking that we'll need a torch soon just to see where we're going around the store. <laughs> That's actually how bad it was. I mean, apparently even staff were making that joke. So even the staff knew, you know, that that was a bit ridiculous. That can't be good for them, you know, not have, you know, having poor light to work by. It's not very safe either, which I did um, bring up in the email. Now, not just for customers who could, might um, walk into something or trip over something because of the poor lighting. You never know. You know what sort of scams people can pull these days. If they can see a chance to scam someone, they will. You know, even if they legit legitimately tripped over something in the store or not, they can still claim. I think I actually mentioned that in the email. That you know that would be easy. No, I didn't. But uh, yeah, that would be easy for, or would have been easy for someone to make a 
lawsuit against that, even if they were com telling complete bollocks, but they'd still probably win because of the situation, because uh, if Sainsbury's not having lights, that wouldn't bode well for Sainsbury's. Plus you had to wander halfway around the store to find some light just to read the, the M label on products. But anyway, it's all fixed now. I think he might be pissed off at me. Actually, I don't think he's pissed off because he's poor. I don't think he's uh, too happy with me for running him over with the chair. But I have told him before not to get under my feet. And he still gets under my feet. Oh well, he's alright, I'm alright. Ouch. I don't know why I said ouch, I've got toe caps on. Right. Well, I'm hungry, so I'm going to go and get something to eat and probably crack on with this when I've got bored watching YouTube videos and probably playing snooker and whatnot. And I'll turn the camera back on. So, bye for now. Welcome back, guys. As you can see, I'll just uh, chuck a few things around. I'm about to um, put this extension socket and this cable. Now, of course, make sure the power's turned off, which I have done. It's all unplugged from down there. And I've had enough shocks in my time to learn that the hard way. Anyway. This is relatively easy to do. You can't do this on all of these. Only some of these you can. Some of them, like the one I've got up on the wall, <coughs> are sealed, so you can't actually uh, swap them. Anyway, I've got the cover off of this one already. I'm just going to uh, put the screws in that top. And uh, there's three terminals. One, two, and three. Now these are marked, there isn't, you can't see it in this light, but there is an L, and an N, and an E. So it's live, neutral, earth. There's even the earth symbol on this as well. So, you'll find that most of these are labelled. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that off. I'm going to move my lamp. I'm getting my hand in the light. That's not actually a proper screwdriver, that's a um, neon tester. Not the most reliable types of tester. Yep, this one's done pretty much the same. That's as much slack on the cable as I can get. Um, so there we go again. Well, they've actually got the wires around the other way in this one. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Take that cable off, and then we can have a closer look. Uh, I'm gonna have to take the cord grip off. There's one thing this hasn't got. Well, it's got a built-in cord grip, not a um, one that you've got to screw down like this one. I could do with a light behind me there, so I'm not getting my, in my own light. Screw the screws. Right. Oh. Oh. Screwdriver's not fitting on that screw. I may need to go get a slightly smaller one. May need to go get a slightly smaller tip screwdriver. Um. Oh. oh no, I've got that one. As long as I can get the screws off, I don't care. Come on. Hmm. I have a better idea when I can remember where I've put them. 
as these screws are being a uh, pain in the bum, which I think I will need them anyway, so. What I'll do. I don't know, I'm gonna fucking do ah. That's alright, I'll use these. I'm just gonna snip the ends of the wires because I'm gonna have to uh cut them to length anyway for the new socket. Right. There we go, that's that off. Yeah, some of these screw heads have got a bit worn, so Well that's better, now I can get on there, that one's loose. Move that cord grip out of the way. There we go. Just, uh, that bit of wire. I'm going to put all this back together because I do plan to keep hold of it and use it for other uses. What's the screw for that? Oh, I've got a screw gun walkabout. Two screws for that are in there. Right. That in there. I'll leave that one there. me. Tell me you're kidding me. Mm. I've got this feeling I could have used this. And as I've got this feeling I could have used it, I think I am going to use it. <laughs> Shit. By a few screws, I mean a tub. <laughs> All sorts of screws in there, and with these bloody great long things, and I don't quite need them that long. Hmm, just a suspicion I've got. Oh, well, would you look at that? You can screw it to a wall. Right. In that case, I'm going to put it all back together again. <laughs> Will that uh, be any easier if I put... Ah! <laughs> I don't know what I can do. I've got a hold of the correct cable. <laughs> I'll just pull that through. Right, I'm going to put that down out of the way just for a moment. I'm going to put the cable back on this one because I would prefer to use the black one because it's fused and got the on off switch. Are we still in view? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to um, reuse it and reconnect these avayas. Hopefully, reconnect the avayas. Um, I don't recommend using your teeth as wire strippers because um, if you do it wrong, it can hurt. <laughs> Even more so on tough wire like this, but uh, I don't know where my wire cutters are gone. Hmm, <laughs> that one hurt. Okay. I wish I'd found that out before I took the water off. <laughs> that would have been so much better. Never mind. Take the screw out. Actually, I've just realised I put the wrong screw in there anyway. That's the cover screw. 
screw because that matched that. So I'm a screw missing. I'm a screw missing for the cord grip. Right. Let's get some screws undone. One. Oh, good. It is labelled on this one as well. Like I said, most things like this will actually have the terminals labelled. And of course, on a British cable, brown is live, blue is neutral, and green and yellow is your earth. On modern cables, it's different on older cables. But uh, thankfully, we don't see many older cables these days. But in older ones, like from the 60s, 50s, etc., you'd find um, red is live, black is neutral, and green is earth. Sometimes it was green, sometimes it was green and yellow. Right, so put that live wire in. Rotate the cable. Earth is the shortest, so I'm going to do that one next. Screw that one down. Make sure it's screwed nice and tight. You don't want the wire coming off. Last, if it's going to fit, is um, neutral might give us a bit of an issue because I'm on the short side. So I'm not sure I can uh, get that in. Maybe I'd have been better off doing neutral first. too far because then they'll fall out and they're fiddly to get back in. But a screwdriver is not magnetic. Uh, I've got poxy live wire in the way. And now the earth wire in the way. Get right. your bums out of the way. Get that out of the way as well. Well, one of the troubles my mum was having, and my sister and, her, and co at their place has uh, partially been resolved. Again, I'm not going to go into details because it is personal matters, but it has been partially resolved, which is uh, good. No, I do believe I'm going to have to um, sh um, strip a bit more cable back. Right. Last I heard, Mum was still at the um, factory clinic, having her hands seen too, but I suppose, you know, it'll be a bit of a wait and whatnot. Don't know why they give you a timed appointment, you know, please be here at such and such time. Because these hospitals will never see you at that time. I might as well just tell you to turn up at that specific time and not make it as an an official appointment. Mm -hmm. Turn up at this time and we will see you when we can fit you in. Mm -hmm. Is that neutral going to be too long now? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Snip a little bit off. Hopefully that wasn't too much. I hope. Doesn't matter because I can pull a bit more through if I have to anyway. Uh, which I will just smidge a bit more. It's 
so fiddly because you've got to get your wires um, cut to fit. It's not just a case of stripping the wires back, keeping them all the same length and uh, screwing them to the terminals because all of these are a different distance from where the cable enters the socket. You've got to cut them to length. Right, I think I've done it this time. Rude, I won't do that. Get your bum in the hole. Go on. Pops your cord grip. wire connected. And that will go in like that. Now I've got to get the live wire done. I'll do next. And I'll probably trim the earth off while I'm at it. So if I trim there for that one. And approximately there for that one. And uh, let's put the wires back. <coughs> yeah, like I said, I don't recommend using teeth unless you're nuts like I am. Or got a strong set of mashes. Better get those flakes of wire out of here, that won't be good, will it? Move around, cause a short. I'll take it off in seconds, but it takes so long to put the damn thing back on. But uh, I could have just put the wire on the white one and used that, but it will uh, now find out I can actually screw this to the wall, just not in the same way that one is. That's probably what it was that confused me. Cold grip down. Come on, bitch, get around there. Come on. Okay, so I took three screws out of this. Now we're going to find the one. Well, this is the one to the cord grip. Or for the other side of the cord grip, I should say. Ow! Yeah, it's not, it's not great when you slip. And I'm going to have to redo the neutral wire from the look of it. Because it's a uh, snooty commute.
it's not a bad idea that I pulled the cable out there because it'll make life easier screwing up to the wall. Problem is, I've got too much copper wire poking out of the thing. So, it's a little nicely twisted and a bit trimmed off. So, get the screw screwed down. Put the neutral wire in place. Make sure the screw is tight. There we go. Put the cover back on. Yeah, I've got a cover screw missing myself from somewhere. Two out, put them on the desk, and one has done a vanishing trick. Right. One's alright to hold that on there. We'll put this cover back on this one so I don't lose the screws. tidying work as well. Right. So, plan is to plonk that on the wall perhaps between these two computers. So, I will move that toy car up there out of the way. Do need to find some long enough screws. Four of. Might be overkill. Oh no, actually it won't be. There's one. There's two. Can I find two more of those or something of equivalent length? This, uh, well, that one would be overkill. No, well, second thoughts, that one would be overkill. That'll go through the wall. That'll be in the kitchen. That one? No, it's too short. And a rally badge. Screwdrivers I had about here, now I can't find one. Okay, I'm gonna move. What was that? Oops. My hub. Oh, let's just 
hit the wireless button. Oops. And what I want to do is move this this further this way, which it was originally. I don't know why this table has ended up that way. Anyway. we have again Somewhat level, somewhat straight. And at least with it here, I can uh, access the switch and the fuse should I have to. And if you're wondering, this isn't a brick wall, it's a stud wall, plasterboard, drywall, or whatever you want to call it. Hence why I can just screw the screws straight into the wall. I actually grip surprisingly well. I think that one might have actually hit a wooden stud. <laughs> that went in really, really well. And tight. Last screw, and we're done. I'm going to open that wall up again. Turn that switch off, and that's that installed. And push my desk back. Bugger off, I'll go downstairs because I need the zip ties. Boo. I'm going to get them in a bit. Right. Everything is slow. I'm slow. Yes, yeah, so all I've got to do now is uh, do some cable tidying of some description. Of some sort, anyway. Not sure what I'll do yet. But uh, spaghetti junction does need to be sorted out. I don't even think I've got any PVC tape up here to use. Um, I'll 
Right, so let's open the bloody wall out of the way. What? Uh, I should put spirit level on that just to see how far out it is from that. Because I've eyed it up. And you saw me eye it up and not use a spirit level. Yeah, why not? Let's go see if I can find one. I know I've got one somewhere. Should have one in my toolbox up here. I have two, two, rather, toolboxes. I've got the main one downstairs. And I've got this one up here. This has got more sort of DIY type tools in it, you know. And some electrical tools. You see, I've got one of these. Two of these, actually. Got that one as well, but the batteries have fell out of that one. This one does work. If I put that near something live, that should. Well, now that tells me that the wire at the top is permanent live. That's why it's probably a lot safer to use one of these to test for live parts than it is one of them neon tester screwdrivers. Uh, all sorts in here. It's a good sort out, really. There's tools in here I don't use. So I've got hole cut. I don't know why I've got them, because I don't use them. <laughs> right. Shall we see how far out, if I am out, of this? <laughs> Absolutely spot on, look at that. That is perfectly between those two lines. So if I do have any talent, I do have a level eye. And I'll tell you, I didn't use a spirit level to put these shelves up either. <laughs> See? Who needs a spirit level when you've got a level eye like mine? Trust me, I can spot something on the wonk mile off. You saw me with your own eyes. I did not use a spirit level to put that on the wall. And you've just seen it is perfectly level. I'm well chuffed with that. Go in there. Whew. I could actually shrink this toolbox down if I wanted to. Because like I said, for upstairs here, I only really need like a DIY type toolbox. Hammer. Um, perhaps just a, an assortment of spanners, an assortment of screwdrivers. Preferably a hacksaw with a blade in it. A couple of pairs of pliers and that would be about it. I only ever use it for DIY tasks, like what I've just done, you know, putting a socket on the wall or a shelf up or something. Uh, the problem is I'm a typical man and I don't want to get rid of my tools. They're my tools. I like my tools. Is that a groundhog? <laughs> 